What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bowers & Wilkins CT 7.4 LCRS. LCRS stands for left, center, right, and surround. So you can use these for any channel in a surround sound setup. Now these are a part of their custom theater line, hence the CT. There's three models in the lineup. The CT 7.5, which is the small version. The 7.4s, these guys and the 7.3s, which are the biggest ones. We'll be taking a look at the middle ones. Now, before we get these things unboxed, if you've got an interest in home theater, hi-fi, or movies, then consider tapping the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Inside, we get some documentation, a speak-on connector, mounting brackets for wall mounting, two foam plugs if you want to use these sealed, and here we have the speaker grill. These are some hefty speakers weighing in at 34.7 pounds. Size-wise, they're 17.5 inches wide, by 13.5 inches high, by 10.5 inches deep. They've got a textured matte black finish, which will be highly non-reflective if they're going to be placed out in the open. Up front, you'll find two 6.5-inch mid-bass drivers with a frequency response down to 49Hz. Up top is B&W's famous Nautilus tube loading tweeter. It's flanked by two ports that can be sealed using the included foam plugs. Around back you'll find the binding posts, or you can connect to your amp using the included speak-on connector. If you're going to mount to a wall, there are pre-drilled holes for the wall mounts, and there are more mounting points underneath the speaker. For setup, the speakers will be hooked up to a Trinov Altitude 16, Rotel amplifiers, and I'll be using a Zipidi Media Player and Apple TV for my sources. The 7.4s will be at ear level when sitting down, and they've been hung on the wall using the included mounting brackets. I've also hung the overhead height channels above the seats. Now as reference, I was previously using 11 Arendelle sound speakers in my theater. I'll leave a link for that review at the end of this video. They are a much nicer built speaker and something you wouldn't mind showing off. The 7.4s have that dull matte finish and is really meant to be hidden away out of sight. For me personally, I do quite like the way they look. The matte finish is non-reflective and won't reflect light coming off of your screen. So for listening purposes, I ran all of the speakers full range and without a subwoofer. That way I can hear how their response was without any low end help and to see how dynamic they are. I've also turned off any room correction and just had levels and delays adjusted. Since these are their custom theater speakers, I've only tested them with movies. First movie being probably the most aggressive immersive Atmos mix this year, Midway on 4K Blu-ray. If you've heard this mix before, then I'm sure you're aware of how active the surround mix is within the lower and the height channels. The bass is also insanely robust, but keep in mind, I'm not using a subwoofer. As the first opening aerial attack gets started, you'll immediately hear planes start approaching in the front channels, then quickly fly by, moving through the height channels, then disappearing in the back channels. The scene has a tremendous amount of LFE, of which the speakers can't do any justice alone. There is, however, a constant bass presence that travels from front, top stage, then dissipating towards the back. Having all the exact same speakers allows the sound movement to travel through each channel while keeping the same frequency response. So let's say if you had large tower speakers up front and little in-ceiling speakers, the planes flying by would have more presence up front, then sound like little drones moving above you when they reach the ceiling. And if you had medium-sized back speakers, the response would again change as the plane moves towards the back. 
Having all matching 7.4s, there's a zero disconnect as sound effects pan through each channel. And if you don't think size matters and there's no bass in the height channels or the surround channels, then you're doing yourself a disservice and missing out on what a great immersive mix can offer. Just have a listen to what only the surround speakers sound like running full range, with left, center, right, and the subwoofers not being active. So this movie being so bass heavy, I found the 7.4s to do better than what I was expecting on the low end. The Arendelle Monitor S's that I had in here were a bigger speaker and had deeper response. But these guys are no slouch. Obviously the lowest rumble and the body massaging bass isn't going to be here, but there is enough to be satisfying if you're listening late at night or if you live in an apartment and don't want to disturb the neighbors. Where these speakers do fall short from the Arendelles I had in here would be in the mid bass. If we take for instance Mufasa's voice in The Lion King, the Arendelles had a heavier, weightier feel. The 7.4s sounded like they were on a diet in comparison. I mean, you can EQ it to give it more chestiness, but straight out of the box, the Arendelle speaker sounded like Mufasa, while the 7.4s are more like teenage Simba. Morning Zazu, you have the morning report. Yes sir! <clears throat> Uh, ten flamingos are taking a stand. Uh, two giraffe were caught necking. The buzz from the bees. Ready for some the, fun. the birds are tweeting at four in the morning. The next movie I threw in was A Quiet Place. I like to use this movie because there's a ton of very nuanced environmental sound effects. I'm talking feet crunching on leaves and sand, characters breathing, wind blowing, or twigs and branches snapping. I'm sure you get the idea. Now, I will say the Arendelle speakers I had are some of the most detailed speakers I've heard in my theater. The tweeters also sat in a large waveguide, which gave a very large soundstage across all three of my seats. The B&Ws on the other hand don't have a waveguide or a horn or anything to help broaden the sound. It's more like a monitor in that it's direct and comes right at you. I felt when the Arendelles were in here, there was a more spacious soundstage and almost all movies had a deep presence. With the B&Ws it's more front and center and I was able to hear details more clearly. I'd say the Arendelle speakers added some of their own flavor to the mix, while the 7.4s are what I would think to be more accurate to the mix. If a movie was meant to sound big and cinematic, the 7.4s would convey that. If a movie took place in a small enclosed space, the 7.4s would make it sound small and not so expansive. Now I'm not taking away anything from the Arendelles or any waveguide or horn loaded speaker, I'm just relaying the differences that I've heard in my space. And remember, sound is a subjective thing. So like I was saying, since the 7.4s are more forward sounding, I was able to make out those subtle effects more easily. The opening chapter of the movie has characters walking through an empty store where it's just bare feet tiptoeing on the floor and tiny little atmospheric sounds. The B&Ws deliver those effects with a clean top and smoothness. They're airy and not overly sharp, yet they can capture those subtleties in a well recorded soundtrack. I don't think these tweeters are as good as their diamond tweeters that you could find on their more expensive models, but they are very detailed and refined nonetheless. You can play them loudly and they'll still sound composed at painfully loud levels. Another one of my go-to movies is Gravity. This has also got an Atmos mix and it's excellent to use when you want to see how well your speakers blend together. If you listen closely to the conversation between Clooney and Sandra Bullock, you can hear Sandra on the left floating between the left and center channel while Clooney does the same on the right. As the camera pans, Sandra slowly drifts off to the left surround channel and the camera pans putting Clooney on the left and Sandra on the right. Being all matching speakers, the dialogue sounded as if it was floating in real time around the theater. The vocal inflections never changed once and all you hear is perfectly balanced sound movement. This is really a game changer having identical speakers all around. In conclusion, I wouldn't say this would be an upgrade over my previous setup, I think it's more of a sidestep. Every system is going to have their own strengths and weaknesses. For me, 
the biggest differentiator would be the fact that all of the speakers are now exactly the same speaker. I think if your space allows for such a setup, you'll find that this is the next level of surround sound cohesiveness. Timbre matching, which is when your speakers share the same sound characteristics, is perfect here. It gives your processor less to do if you're using room correction. I mean, the speakers should measure roughly the same across the board. As mentioned before, I would have liked more mid-bass presence since they seem light in that area, but I suppose that's why they offer a bigger version with a dedicated mid-range. Still though, these are some fantastic sounding speakers when they're used as a collective whole. Sound movement is perfectly matched, and it's an incredibly dynamic system. Once you pair the speakers with some capable subwoofers, there isn't any movie soundtrack the speakers can't handle. Now, these speakers have been around for many years, and for good reason. Simply because they sound great. At the time of this video, each CT7.4 retails for $1,200. I think if your budget permits, then giving these a listen might change your mind into thinking all matching speakers might be the way to go. So those are my thoughts on the BMW CT7.4s. Have you guys heard them and how do you think they sound? Leave a comment and let us know. Now if you guys are interested in giving these a listen or want to pick them up, then give our friends at Value Electronics a call and tell them we sent you. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you found it useful, and if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.